Uh, we have a lot of great sponsors that, uh, that make these events possible. And uh, we uh, you know, are so grateful for the support of all of the companies in the OpenStack community who contribute through code, through sponsoring different events, and especially our summits. And we have four headline sponsors here that we're going to be hearing from over the next two days. We're going to have two today and, uh, and two tomorrow. And uh, so now we're going to be hearing from our first headline sponsor, HP. And uh, to kick it off, they've got a video for us. So let's go with the HP video. So open source is all about collaborating and working together to solve problems. I think there are many in, who would argue that it's actually better technology. Open source is probably the greatest trend of our time when it comes to development. The cloud of tomorrow is based on open source technology. It's important to HP that we have a strong foundation to build all of the components of OpenStack because we're committed to OpenStack itself. Helion takes what OpenStack does as a generic piece of functionality and builds it into a framework and a product that customers can use. We are here to make sure that OpenStack is good for everybody. They truly believe in the open source development model and they're able to, to kind of attract people that, that are interested in that as well. We're also building up thousands of awesome technologists who will go out and do other cool things. And they see the benefits of doing things which maybe other companies don't want to do, things like infrastructure and QA and making sure that the, the things that aren't as sexy are done so that the project can be successful. Please welcome SVP of Engineering for HP Cloud, Mark Interante. Well, it's great being here. Uh, I always enjoy the summits and enjoy talking to everyone. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about uh, what a difference uh, we've been going on in the last five years. So back in the early days, back in uh, 2010, in San Antonio, we had uh, a small group of people uh, getting together, and I, I gave a keynote back in that uh, San Antonio summit. And there were some things that as we talked to our customers, and as we'd thought about how we're going to build an awesome, powerful cloud, we realized that what we needed uh, coming out of OpenStack and what we hoped we could build with the community was things that could support applications at a planetary scale. And we just got through seeing the great stuff that, uh, that Walmart's doing, s serving a billion plus page views uh, in over a day. We realized that any kind of cloud would have to have authentication, authorization. It would need to connect into other resources, other systems, uh, and other ways to have good authentication. Everybody has data centers. Everybody's data center is full of awesome applications that are currently running. We lovingly call these legacy applications. We knew we had to support hybrid scenarios that were powerful. And lastly, in the stuff I was so excited to hear about the, the Keynote Federation demo, we knew back then that there would be many, many people building OpenStack clouds. And we wanted to make those things federatable, connectable, and so that people could have resources that they would be able to access across public, private, hybrid, and on-demand clouds. And lo and behold, we're already there, and that's really exciting. So just kind of look at us today. We've got uh, five years in, we've got developers that are rapidly building cloud-native applications. Native applications at scale, that are deeply reliable, that are highly scalable. You know, back. Then we had people wrestling with automation. We had hundreds of people in different companies working on how do you take the core infrastructure that we have, how do you put software beside it, and how do you get it to adapt and evolve in a way that at least keeps the systems up and running and alive? We're now seeing people developing more complex hybrid scenarios with more robust software-defined infrastructure. And today, with our 11th release, 1,500 contributors around, around the world, um, total number of developers is, is, is still 3,500. 
You know, one of the things I'm very um, proud of is the number of casual developers that are contributing in uh, to the OpenStack releases. Um, OpenStack has got lots of, of, of large companies, lots of people, a lot of people are working on it, but the vibrancy of a community is really defined by not only how many people are working on it full time, but how many people are scratching an itch, how many people are using it for a production workload, and they've got to fix a few things. They want to make it a little bit better for their case, for their needs. And over the last six months, we've added 13% more casual developers, people who are just working on it part time, and that's very exciting. In fact, at HP, we've got over 250 people who've contributed to the last release of OpenStack. Some of them full-time and working on it every day. Uh, some people working in other divisions where they've got a way that they think they can connect up networking or storage um, or different aspects of our compute systems. So those kinds of contributions, I think, uh, are really working well. So if we look at us today, this summit will have uh, an ex kind of more of an expanded footprint in, in a couple of ways uh, that I feel is really this is the right time. So back, uh, we talked about this earlier, with Phil the Philadelphia operators uh, meetup. It was overflowing. They had to double the size of the room twice because so many operators, people like, like you out there, who are operating and running OpenStack clouds wanted to talk and share. And so in this summit, we're having a large continuous operator uh, conversation. And this is really one of the places I think we'll be going very soon, is the operators are going to be teaching all of us more powerfully how we end up building better, better software. There's a couple other tracks I wanted to mention briefly. One is the win the enterprise, because this is one of the SIGs that is helping us understand how do we build an ecosystem? How do we continue to connect in with more and more enterprise technology customers so they can understand the value of OpenStack, the, how it's going to work for them, and how to engage in that. And a quick call out to the product SIG, a, a, gr a group of folks uh, from around the, around the companies that are trying to help understand from a product point of view, a product management point of view, how do you think about customers and use cases and specific scenarios. So for those, there's a number of sessions on that here in the next couple of days. Uh, I hope you guys have interest in that. Please, uh, please attend those sessions. So the, the OpenStack that brought us here, um, it's hardware agnostic. One of the things that our application developers, those of us that have written apps for much of our lives, want is uh, a system that is hardware agnostic, that arouse, allows rapid innovation at the software and hardware level, and that allows us to basically continue to evolve our application environment. So uh, over in our booth, you'll see a bunch of racks with some fantastic HP gear, and you'll see one rack uh, with a bunch of everybody's gear. Uh, not everybody's, but a lot of people's gear. And part of our Helion OpenStack runs uh, on many, many vendors' machines. So let me talk a little bit about looking towards the future. So first thing is that the hybrid cloud should be unobtrusive and work really seamlessly for the application developers. Uh, one of the things that Jonathan talked about is like developer productivity. And Great idea, glad we thought about it now. But as companies are becoming software businesses, you've got to be able to enable more and more powerful application development productivity in DevOps. And it should just work. The contracts should be understood, the performance should be understood, and, and application architects and developers should be able to know this is what they can depend on, and here's how they're going to make things work well. OpenStack needs to be simpler. You shouldn't need a PhD to run it. When, when the team that I was working with uh, back at Rackspace put the first production cloud out in 2012 at scale, required a lot of people with, with uh, PhDs. And over the years, it's gotten better and better and better. I think we need to take it down another level. I challenge us in the next 18 months to bring the amount of complexity for operators down by a factor of five in the next three releases. We're committed to, my teams are committed to sharing what we know. We are actively want to work with other companies to find out what the core issues are, to bring those to the forefront, to help us get those problems in front of our own, our people, ourselves, and find ways to solve those problems. If we can bring down the operator complexity, making it easier to bring on scale, to bring on new hardware, to integrate in things, to have things work seamlessly, this will 
dramatically enable the way that OpenStack can come, become part of the enterprise. We need to collaborate more intensely on cross-cutting issues. Cross-cutting issues, what does that mean? So things that cross many, many subsystems within the cloud. IPv6 is a great example. Uh, Role-based access control, a great example. Um, NFV, the network function virtualization, enabling cases like this that cross multiple subsystems and getting those to be able to be brought forward in just a release or two is absolutely critical for our ability to grow as a community. And kind of lastly in the major themes, security. As I've talked to lots of customers, whether they're uh, people who run software infrastructure for big companies, uh, VPs of infrastructure, or CIO sometimes, what we end up understanding more and more deeply is that there's a set of industries where the security concerns are deeply paramount. Uh, just like, OK, well, I get that, firewalls, all that stuff. Yeah, but it gets a bit deeper than that. The people that are really thinking about this more and more closely are those that are saying, my elements within an OpenStack cloud of a control plane can't trust each other. So I ask for a VM. How do you know the machine image was what you asked for and not been attacked by a man in the middle attack? So some very large customers are actively thinking and, and wondering, how are we going to do that? So there's a whole security track here. And, and a lot of good movement has been happening in our security work. And we need to move that forward more aggressively, whether it's software technology like Barbican or whether it's uh, pieces of hardening and other pieces of encryption. This is gonna be critical if we wanna be able to serve uh, those companies. And this has been kind of the year of the breach from a security point of view. It's been very critical. So a brief look at HP and OpenStack. Um, so our, our blue layer is our Healy and OpenStack. We're committed to the open source community and we empower uh, ourselves and and our customers through innovation and productivity. We ship all the main parts of, of OpenStack uh, in, our, in our, uh, our distribution. We also layer that, though, with uh, a PaaS and developer productivity services. We're platinum members of Cloud Foundry. I gave a keynote last week where we contributed in, announced that we were contributing in all of our native .NET code. So it makes it easier for the 40-something percent of enterprise developers who use .NET to be able to build Cloud Foundry native .NET applications. And the reason we're doing this is that we believe that Cloud Foundry and OpenStack together work really well for enterprise developers. We've optimized and uh, built great bindings between Cloud Foundry and OpenStack. We've got native Trove. We've got, native, we've got messaging services as Q. So we've worked very closely, and our teams work hand in hand to make sure that this is going well. Um, and then we have a service, a, our service catalog, which is our software SaaS, uh, hardware, and application services for a service provider. So overall, these are the main, the main elements that HP is doing to contribute into uh, giving our customers an innovative platform to build great applications on. So please go forth. Um, look for our, our, our folks with the gray hoodies. Uh, later today, right after this, there's a full a, sesh, a track for HP, room 208 and 209. Monty Taylor is going to be kicking that off. Uh, come by our booth for live demonstrations of our Healy rack. And also, come on, get, get, get a hoodie. We also have wonderful icons and badges you can iron on for all of the projects. Ironic alchemists, the Keystone Kings, the Supernovas, and all the rest of them. So thank you very much, and look forward to seeing you in the rest of the summit.